In this tutorial, we're going to use our FPS controller to run into a cube. This cube will be known as our trigger, and the collision that occurs here will stop the platform from moving. So just to have a look at what we're doing. You can see the cube and the platform is moving in the top right hand corner. You'll notice I'm on the console down the bottom left hand corner. When I run into the cube, you'll see the collision has been detected and the platform stopped moving. So therefore now if I wanted to, I could possibly run and jump onto the platform. And if I had another cube, I could then turn the platform movement back on as well. So let's have a look at how we can control other objects from a collision. So what we have in our display is a basic floor, which is a 3D cube with the properties of 21 and 20, and I've renamed it as floor. So I've changed cube to floor by just typing its name up the top here. I've also put in the platform. It's still a 3D cube, and I've stretched it out to 5.5 and 3, and I've given it a position of 10, 2.77, and 6.35, but you can move that into whatever position you like and or if you want to type them in, you just type it in. There's also the trigger. The trigger is also a 3D cube, which has a one by one by one, and it has its default starting position. These have also been given a material. You can see the floor material here, and what I'll do in the comments of the video is put, it to, put the link to the tutorial for that. But one of the first things we need to do is actually move the platform. So we're gonna start with the moving of the platform. So I'm just gonna come into Assets, right mouse click, Create Folder, and I'm going to call this scripts. Inside this folder is where I'm going to create my scripts. The first one's going to be the platform moving one. So I'm just going to create a C sharp script and we'll call this back fourth movement. And then I'm going to double click this script and open up Mono Developer. This will open up Mono Developer or whatever editing script that you may have. If you're on a PC, it might actually open up Visual Studio, but whatever editor that you're using. Now, what we want to be able to do is move the platform backwards and forwards. So we want some sort of motion that's occurring. So what we're going to do is first of all we're going to set a variable up the top. We're going to set a public float and this is going to start with speed that we need for the moving of the platform. And then what we want to do is in the update, so on every frame we want to be able to update the object. So we're just going to transform position and we want to actually give it a new position so it's going to be new vector 3 and we want to use a function which is known as ping pong. So it's, that's found within the maths F function set and it's called ping pong. And we can actually then set the time for this. And also that's going to be of time. And then we'll multiply that by the speed that we declared before. And then we'll give it how many frames we want it to move. So in this case here, it's going to be five. Also, we need to transform the Y position and we also want to transform the Z position. I'm just going to save this now and then we want to apply that script to the platform. So I'm just selecting platform and I'm going to drop the script either on the object itself or come across the right and let it go and you'll see the script goes in there as well. So I'm just going to play this and see if it's working. Oh, we notice that it's actually back at the zero, 0 position, so I'm just going to push escape and stop the play. You notice the platform has a X position of 10, that's its starting position, so what I need to do in the code itself is actually add 10 to the X position, so I'm just going to come back in here, add 10, and that'll move it across the screen 10 to its X position because that's the one that is updating. So I'll just save that, and now I'm going to run it again. And you can see now it's moving out there on the right hand side off the floor. So now it's a floating moving platform. So what I want to do now is change it. So when I run into this red cube, that a collision detects and that platform stops. So let's start by sorting out the collision. To do this, I'm going to need another script. So I'm going to create a script. This script here is going to be um, stop platform. And I'm just going to double click this now. So what's going to happen in this script here is we're going to have a look at the collision. So I want to have a look at when the FPS controller, which is here, runs into this red cube here. So I'm going to apply this script to the red cube and say, okay, I want you to listen for when this collision occurs when someone runs into you. So to do that, we need to create a new function down the bottom here. 
So we're going to start with void, and we're going to look at a particular function which is on collision. Enter. So when a new collision occurs, and we're going to be looking at the collision. And then we want to store that information of the collision somewhere. So we want to put that into a variable, and I'm just going to call this a game object information. So if there is a collision, I'll just open a bracket and close a bracket. So if there is a collision, so on collision enter, if there is a collision, store the information about that collision, what you hit, in game object information. So the first thing I want to be able to do before I get too carried away is make sure that this collision is occurring. So I'm going to use a debug dot log, which will talk to our little game window or our output window in our console, and I just want to put um, collision detected. So this will tell me that it's occurring, because it's good to check that the collision is occurring before I get too carried away, otherwise we may be trying to write code for something that's not working. So the first thing I'm going to do is save that. Now it's important if you're going to have a collision that you add a rigid body to everything. So rigid body needs to occur. If you don't have rigid body, just go add component and type in rigid up the top, R-I-G, and you'll see rigid body come up. This gives the object mass. You'll also notice our rigid body is on our FPS controller. So if those two objects, because they've got rigid bodies now, the game event listener can hear that on collision enter. Now that the rigid bodies are done, we're going to apply that script. So we're going to go into our project and put stop platform onto our trigger object. So our trigger object now is listening for a collision and if something collides with that it's going to write in our console output window which is here and tell us there was a collision that occurred. Now you notice the collision occurred straight away it's already said collision detected in the bottom left hand window down here. So what we need to do is put a condition in so that we can detect the collision of the FPS person. So we've got the information in the game object here, so of the collision stored here. So now what we want to do is actually go in and use an if statement and say, well, if the game object information dot game object dot name is equal equal to, and then we can actually put the name of the object in here. So we want to check to see if FPS controller has ran into it. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that in here. And put a bracket around that. And then I want to press enter and open a brace. So if it is the FPS controller, we want to then write collision detected. We need to place a bracket at the start of this one. So if the game object information dot game object dot name is equal to FPS controller, then write in the debug window rather than when the cube starts, it's touching the ground. So it's now listening to see if there is collision with the FPS controller. So let's save this and run the game now. Before you run the game, just make sure you clear the console window. So click on clear so it is clear. So now we have the cube on stage, and now it's run into the controller. So now it knows FPS controller has run into it. So let's just stop the script or the game now. So now what we want to do is actually control this platform from moving. So we want the platform to stop moving. To do this, we're going to head back into our code, but we're going to go into our back and forth movement. This is our platform moving here. So what I want to do is create a new variable in here, and this is going to be called a public, and it's going to be a boolean this time, and it's going to be stop block. And we're going to let that equal false, because what I want is a switch to say, well, if stop block is false, I want it to keep moving, but if, the f if this variable gets turned to true, then I don't want it to move. And to get this to work, what we're going to do is we're going to head down into our update and we're going to put the if statement in here as well. And we're going to say, well, if stop block is equal equal to false, 
then I want it to keep moving, which is this line of code here. So let's delete those out. So if it is not, if it's set to false, it wouldn't keep moving. But we want to change it and say, well, else, if it does actually um, change from false to say true to stop the block, we then want to transform. And I'll just pick this line of code up here again. And I'm just going to paste it down here rather than having to type it all out. And I'm just going to change this little bracket here to freeze it in its position. So I'm going to give it a new position, but I'm going to transform the um, transform dot position dot x. So what it's going to do is give it a new vector three and its x position. And I'm just going to close that bracket off. So when the game starts now, just short one bracket there, I must have used it. So that bracket lines up that block, and then this one lines up the public class. So now I can save this and run the program. You can see the platform is moving. And if I check the stop block, you can see it stop. So this is false, and this is true. So what we want to be able to do is change that false and true flag that is located here from this script here. Now we know that we've run into this collider. So what we need to do now is actually get the information of the other object, which is our platform. So we're going to declare a variable. We're going to call it platform information. And that platform information is going to be equal to the game object. And in particular, we want to find it. And what we want to find is the name of the object, which we can see here, which is platform. So we're looking in the game for platform. And when you find platform, take all its information and store it in platform information. Then what we want to do is go var platform scripts is equal to platform information dot get component. And then what we want to do is get the script name. So in this case here, it's called back and forth movement. So what we can do is go up here and just copy the script name. And then we want to close that with a bracket bracket and a semicolon. So just fixing up platform information. So the platform scripts is equal to platform information, which is when we find the game object platform, take all the details about it, store it in platform information, then take the platform information and get the component, which is the script which is this one here, and store that information in platform scripts. Now from here we can actually control what is happening. We can actually say, well, we can change the speed of the platform if we wanted to. We can go platform and we can set that to zero. So that will then look into here, find speed at the moment set to two. And we could actually set that to zero if we wanted to. Also, we can use the platform scripts. Dot stop block. And we can actually set that to true. Here's a capital G for get component. Just save that. Run our program. We just got to make sure our default value for our platform was set correctly. So it's moving. So you can see it's moving now. And when I run into the block, you get a collision and the block stops moving. And you can see now that this flag has actually been changed for us. So that's how we can set a trigger to actually control another object and quickly in review, 
what we're doing is we're selecting or detecting the collision, working out exactly what we're colliding with. Once we've done that, this section of work here gets the information. So we store the object platform and its details into platform information. Then what we use is use platform information to get the script that controls the platform. This is where those Boolean variables are, are stored. Then what we use is platform scripts and we use platform script.speed which then looks at this controller here because it's public and platform scripts.stop block because this is a public we can see that and then we're just changing one value to zero and the other value to true when this flag goes from false to true then this then goes from doing the then part when it becomes true it then goes and does the else part here so I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Unity tutorials and good luck with your future game development.